Okay, so I'm shooting here in the living room. I haven't shot a video in here in a little while. Basically what I'm needing is a new computer for my living room TV. I've shown this a few times in the past. It's uh, It has been a little while. But basically what I've got is a laptop behind the, uh, the TV um, and then a Logitech trackpad and keyboard combo that allows me to move the right mouse around uh, left and right mouse buttons and uh, another left one up here that you can use. So basically you just use it the way you would a computer. So it's a computer connected to uh, to the television. Um, the, uh, the computer is hidden back here on the wall. And it's just wall mounted. Um, originally in the videos I did before this was an MSI laptop and in those videos I showed um, how to replace the Wi-Fi adapter. I went from a wireless N to a wireless AC uh, Wi-Fi adapter to get better internet on this computer. Um, I showed originally how to wall mount it, how to set it up as a like home theater PC, and I wall mounted it behind the television. And I also showed how to replace the DVD drive in a laptop with a hard drive using a, a, a caddy. And about a week ago, I replaced that MSI laptop with a Dell laptop. What was happening is the MSI laptop, the graphics chip built into that laptop, and actually it was a Core i5, original Core i5 processor in that laptop, so the graphics were integrated into the, uh, into the processor. The, the chip just couldn't keep up with playing video smoothly. Like um, this, on this uh, newer Dell laptop, I can play a video, have it go full screen, and it's smooth. Uh, there's no stuttering, it doesn't break up. It looks good. So that's the same for like a Twitch video here, or YouTube videos, or um, videos on Netflix. The old laptop, it just couldn't keep up, it was starting to... Uh, give really choppy video results. So, I uh, about a week ago, like I said, I moved the, uh, the Wi-Fi adapter I had put in that MSI laptop, along with the hard drive and the solid-state drive, over to this newer Dell Inspiron. And this is an Inspiron model 3542. And it's keeping up right now with the, uh, my video needs. The thing is, in the next couple of months, I'm going to be getting a 4K television. And this laptop just can't put out a 4K signal. It's just not capable. And the um, the graphics on it aren't upgradable. It's a laptop. You really can't do anything with it as far as upgrading the graphics. So, I need a new system. And what I was... what I'm planning on doing is building a new system around this processor right here. Um, this came out of a, an all-in-one computer uh, where the motherboard had failed. Um, the client didn't want to spend the money to either repair the motherboard or replace the motherboard. So basically I just recovered the data from the hard drive, moved it to a new computer for them, and they left the whole system with me. They didn't even want the drive. So I took the drive out, I took the RAM out of the computer, and I took this processor out. Uh, this processor is a Intel Core i5 Model 3470. And I'm relatively certain this processor is okay. I don't have a system that I can put it in to test it to know for sure, but most likely it's okay. Right now I'm assuming that it is. So what I need to do is build a computer around this processor that's capable of outputting 4K video at 60 frames per second smoothly. It needs to fit behind the television and it needs to be quiet. I can't have anything really loud behind the TV. It kind of spoils the viewing experience, listening experience. So that is, uh, that is what I'm going to be doing. So it needs to go behind here. Let me just set down the processor. The laptop will be going away. Um, so the space I have to work with needs to be to the right of this uh, centerpiece, which is the base for the arm that's holding the TV. From there, about out to where this speaker ends, which is about 19 inches. I'm actually going to try and make it a uh, maximum of 16 inches wide, just so it won't show. And as far as the 
height goes, it's going to be from a little bit above the speaker up to, looks like about 24 inches would be safe. Um, that would be if I move the, uh, the power strip, I can put it over there on the left side of the TV. There's plenty of room over there. If I left the power strip there, it would need to be about 20 inches. So 16 inches wide by 20 or possibly 24 inches high is the space I need to work with. And there's also the depth of the system to consider. Let me move the TV back. So at the top, I've got about seven inches there down to about say six inches there. If I go down, goes down to about five. So if there are thicker parts of the system, they'll, they'll need to be at the top. So this system I'm thinking is not gonna go into a, a, a case, like a desktop case. I'm mostly likely just going to mount it to some kind of a board, all the components to a board, and then I'll mount that board along with all the components to the wall. That's kind of my working plan at the moment. All right, so let's go do some research. All right, so I'm on my main work computer. First I'm gonna do is look up that processor. So it's a Core i5 3470. And it looks like we got an Intel product page here. So it's from the Ivy Bridge family. Launch date was about halfway through 2012. Makes it pretty close to a six-year-old processor. It's got four cores and four threads. Base frequency is 3.2 gigahertz, and that's pretty good. And it will turbo boost up to 3.6 gigahertz. Let's see. The max memory the processor can handle is 32 gigabytes. That's a lot more than we're gonna need. Um, supports DDR3, 1333, and 1600 speeds. Let's see, it's got Intel HD Graphics 2500. And it's socket 1155. So the Intel Graphics 2500, that's going to be the graphics that are built into the CPU. Um, the graphics built into a six-year-old CPU are not likely to uh, be able to put out the 4K 60 frames per second that we need. Let's see, I'll do a search for max resolution. Okay, so yeah, the max it'll do is uh, 2560 by 1440, and I need I need it to do. 3840 by, what is 4K resolution? Thirty eight forty by 2160. That's what I'm looking for. So the graphics built in it to the CPU are not going to, uh, to get me there. So I will need a separate graphics card to add to the computer. But the, uh, the main thing I, I needed to know was the the socket that it goes into. So what I'm needing next is a motherboard. What I'm going to do is do a search on eBay. Oh, look at that. It remembered my last search. Socket 1155 motherboard. So it's got a Dell Optiplex 790 mini tower socket 1155 motherboard for $19.99. That's not bad. Let's take a look at it. Okay, so it's got four RAM slots. That's that up there. It's got, looks like two 16X PCI Express slots, a 1X slot, PCI Express slot, and a PCI slot. It's not a bad option. But just because it uh, it will fit into the motherboard doesn't mean that the motherboard is going to support it. So the next thing I'm going to do is do a search for Dell Optiplex 790MT. I'm going to search that on Google, and I'm going to add the model number 
of our CPU we're wanting to use, which is the 3470. Okay, so there's a article on CNET about its specs, and it looks like it actually lists the, uh, the 3470 here. So that's not a bad option for 1999. Not bad at all. Let's go back. So this looks kind of like a more generic board for 51 bucks. There's one for 50. A few boards here that are in China. I don't really want to wait for those to show up. There's another Optiplex 790MT motherboard for 1890. A gigabyte for 50. An HP motherboard for 18. ASRock for 42. And that's actually got bids on it, so that'll go higher. Lenovo motherboard. Another few in China. Here's an Optiplex. Uh, 790 and 990 MT motherboard for 19. Okay, so uh, Optiplex 910 small form factor socket 1155 motherboard for $18. Let's look at that. So this also has um, four RAM sticks, two PCI Express 16X slots, kind of like in this one. It's got a connector for um, USB 3.0 on it, which probably means some of the ones on the back are also USB 3.0. That other one we were looking at, the 790, did it have 3.0 on it, USB? Let me see, zoom in here. Can't really zoom in that much. What I'm looking for is the, um, the USB 3.0 header on the motherboard, and I don't think it has that. And that would be nice to have. Um, so more than likely, yeah, it looks like all those USB ports on the back are USB 2.0. I'd like to have at least a few 3.0s. Let's go back and scroll down and look at that. Small form factor motherboard. So I'm going to need a graphics card to put in the computer, and it will go into one of those two uh, 16x slots. That's good. Looks like, so it's got the the four memory slots, that's great. Um, it takes a standard 24-pin power connector and also a, a four-pin power connector there. I think this might be a good option. Let's do that same search. Do the hole for small form factor, make sure we because it might be a different motherboard uh, as opposed to like mini tower or ultra small and 3470 which is the CPU model number okay this CNET article lists the 3770 all right here's tech specs optiplex 990 hmm small form factor Let's do a search for specs. There's someone on Amazon.com with the model number of the motherboard and the actual processor we have. Okay. So this is the whole system you could buy for $275 on Amazon. And it comes with uh, our processor. So I'm going to say that's... Uh, it is compatible with that motherboard. It's got to be, really. As long as the manufacturer, Dell in this case, offers the uh, or offered the uh, the CPU you're, you're looking to put in the computer, uh, in that particular computer with that motherboard, it will work. So that's good um, for 
17 bucks, well, 18 bucks, and free shipping. We can get the motherboard. Go ahead and put that in the cart. Let's take a look up close here. Potential issues. Um, so I don't see a standard 4-pin CPU fan header. Some place we can plug a CPU cooler into. It looks like it's got a couple of more proprietary fan connectors on it. Basically, right there is probably the CPU fan. Yeah, it says fan CPU right there. And there's another one over here that's probably for um, a fan that goes in the chassis, or went in the chassis in the actual full computer. So I would need a CPU cooler that could uh, plug in there. And the other thing is it doesn't seem to have the standard pins for the power connectors and uh, LEDs. Let's go find the service manual for uh, for this Dell. Let's go back and do a search for service manual. Okay, manuals and documents. Small form factor owner's manual. Let's see what this gives us. Okay, so it's how to take it apart. That's good. Of course, we're not buying the whole computer. We're really... Okay, intrusion switch. We're really just looking at uh, the, the motherboard and motherboard-related things, which I suppose just about everything is. Okay, removing RAM. Memory module guides. Okay. So when we put RAM in, the first sticks of RAM, if we're only putting two in, need to go into the black connectors. And then secondarily, you would add extra RAM into the ones with the white release levers. Okay, so there's one of the, that's the chassis fan, and it's plugging in, so yeah, it's an unusual connector. Okay, power switch cable. Let's zoom in here. So it appears to be a five connector cable for the power switch. Most likely two of those will actually be for turning the computer on and off. And then the other three will be, will be for LEDs. Um, in Dell Optiplex systems I've seen, they have um, either green and amber or blue and amber lights built directly into the power switch. Let's go back and do a search on eBay. For Optiplex 910 SFF power button. Okay, so for five bucks, I could get one. And it is a five, uh, five pin connector. So if I, if I wanted to, I could buy one of these for five bucks and that would give me an actual power switch. But what I may end up doing is just using a, uh, a screwdriver to jump the two pins together in order to turn the computer on. This computer is gonna be on pretty much nonstop. So uh, maybe it'd be worth the $5 to have an actual power switch. I'll go ahead and put it in the cart. The other thing we're going to need is a cooling fan that has that special connector. Um, let's go back here. Okay, so that's the cooler that came with it, this little grayed out sucker right here. Let's scroll down, there's the power supply. Okay, heat sink. All right. Yeah, so it's a five pin fan connector as well. Um, let's do a search on eBay for Optiplex 9010 
SFF cooler. Okay, so here's a cooler for it. It's $23. But this would give me the, uh, the correct power connector for the fan. And I actually like this style of cooler. Um, it's called a blower. So instead of a standard fan, inside here there's a, uh, a little spinny kind of impeller. I don't know exactly that, if that's what it's called. Um, that would also make the, uh, the height of the motherboard and cooler probably lower than they would be otherwise. That's a bit expensive though. Let's go back and scroll down. Okay, it looks like we're coming up with a whole bunch of full computers there. Let's change up the search to fan. Ah, that's more like it. Yeah. So 1079 or 925. 14. 925, let's see. They're pretty much all going to be used. I wouldn't uh, let that uh, let that bother you. It certainly doesn't bother me. As long as the fan works and uh, it's quiet, that will be good. And Dell Optiplex systems, I've been around a lot of them. Most of the time you can barely even tell that they're running. Um, so they're made to be very, very quiet. Um, I'm going to put this one in the cart. Okay, so for a total of $32.21, we're doing pretty good here. We've already got the processor. The other things that we'll need um, are a power supply, which I have one. Um, you can buy a decent uh, power supply on Amazon or here on eBay for about $25. Bucks. We'll also need RAM for the computer. Um, it takes DDR3 RAM. Let's go ahead and look up the max RAM for this for this motherboard. Go back and do a search for max RAM. Okay, so crucial. You can generally take what they say is gospel as being the very minimum of the amount of RAM a system can take. Uh, 32 gigabytes. Uh, so it's got four memory slots. It means it can take eight gigabytes sticks of RAM. Um, I may or may not have eights. I'm sure I have at least a couple of fours. Let's go ahead and price it out. I mean, if I, if I didn't have the power supply and the RAM, how much would it be for those things on eBay? Power supply. Coolmax 400 watt for 1886. It's not bad. Roswell. Let's see. The brand I have is called Logisys. It's a good basic power supply. Okay, Logisys for 25 bucks. That sounds reasonable. I think that's about what they cost on Amazon as well. On Logisys power supplies, you want to make sure you get one, if you're getting that brand or really any brand, get one with a fan in it or two fans, if, uh, if that's what it comes with, that are 120 millimeter fans. You don't want to get a 80 millimeter fan in a power supply. Uh, that usually makes them a little bit too noisy. Now here's a Logisys. It's pre-owned though. Okay, here we go. This is about what you'd end up paying most places for a 480 watt power supply. That would be more than enough uh, power for, for our system. Let's go ahead and add that in. Be about 26, 27 bucks after shipping. And RAM, um, DDR3, eight gigabyte. We need it for a desktop. Eight gigabyte kit, so two fours. That would probably do us. Okay, so yeah, let's just go with that. So 
So a total for the system, um, which would be everything that we need to actually get it up and running and working, is about a hundred bucks. Let's say if we didn't have the, the processor, how much is the 3470? Okay, let's be a little bit more. Core i5. So 50 bucks. That's 20, but that's being bid up. 25, but bidding being bid up. Okay, so it looks like 50 bucks. Let's go ahead and add that. 153 dollars, and that's really not bad for a Core i5 system, even though it's a, it's an older version of it. Even if I didn't have the parts, that would still be a pretty good deal for putting together a system. Now the other part that uh, that I need is a video card that can do the 4K at 60 hertz. Um, I've done a lot of searching on this already. The one that I, the cheapest one that I came up with that would be quiet, is a Nvidia. GT 1030 and it looks like here it is on eBay and there's two versions of the 1030 you want to make sure you get the one that actually does 4k um, let me see it doesn't really say there uh, let's go back and look at Best Buy So for 110 bucks, basically, go down to the specs. That also does not say. Got to be careful with this kind of thing. Um, let's do a search by right clicking and going to search Google. Okay, the EVGA product page surely says. Specs. There we go. Max resolution is 4K. And max refresh rate is 120. This also doesn't have a, a fan on it, which means it's passively cooled and silent. So that's good. So 100 bucks there. So for a grand total of, let's go back to eBay, 110 bucks, so so $264, $264 total system, Core i5, 8 gigabytes of RAM, that can do uh, 4K at 60 hertz, that's not bad at all. And if I take off the things I actually have, the processor, the RAM, and the power supply, so I'd really just be buying the cooler. I guess I can go ahead and get the power switch just to make life, life easier for myself. And the motherboard is $32.21 plus $110. So I mean $142 maybe with some tax added on the video card. That's very, very cheap. You know what? There's one other thing. Um, this cooler needs to attach to the motherboard. Let me go in here. So what I'm looking at is the mounting holes. So more than likely this motherboard in the Dell case, when it fits in, there's going to be some little risers that come up that have screw holes in them that allow that cooler to attach basically to the case. And the motherboard's kind of sandwiched between it. But since I'm not going to have a case, what I need is a back plate. Uh, it's do a search for 1155, which is the socket type, and backplate. Okay, for seven bucks, you can get a backplate. So what this does, um, that's the back of the backplate. Let's see if we can find the front side. Picture of the front. There we go. So this has screw holes that the cooler will go into. So this comes up, these four screws on the back plate come up. 
through the holes in the motherboard and then the cooler screws into them. I'm definitely going to need one of those. Add that to the cart. Okay, so 40 bucks plus 110, 150 bucks to put together a, uh, a Core i5 system with 8 gigabytes of RAM. Maybe more, I think I have more RAM than that. That can output a 4K signal at 60 hertz. Oh, the other things. Um, I didn't mention it here, but uh, you'd need a hard drive or a solid state drive to go in the system as well. I already have those that are coming out of the laptop that this system is replacing. Ah, I just thought of something else. I also need Wi-Fi in this system. Um, there is a PCI half mini card, little Wi-Fi adapter that I put in that laptop that's wireless AC. Let me look. Um, so I would need a PCI half mini, oh, mini, half mini PCIe. What's that? Okay, yeah, it's talking about, this is the type of card that I have in that laptop. And I'd like to move this over to this new system I'm building. Um, but I need like an adapter that would go into one of the, the slots on the motherboard. Um, to PCIe Express. Okay, something like that. So it's kind of a little adapter card. Um, for 12 bucks from China. Yeah, this is what I need. What'll happen is, let me see if I can find a better picture. The Wi-Fi adapter I have will go in here. This will go into one of the PCI Express 16X slots on the motherboard. And this will give me antennas out the back that attach to wires that are then attached to the adapter. I think one of those will work. Although I don't really want to wait for one to come from China. And I don't want to pay 30 bucks for it either. Also from China. Hong Kong, China. Ish. Okay, let's go look on Amazon and see what we can find. All right, keywords. Uh, what did I use to search for that? I'm going to copy that, paste it into Amazon, and see what we find. 17 bucks. Better. 12 bucks but it doesn't have antennas. Hmm. Let's simplify the search. Do that. No. What about just PCI E? Okay, that looks promising. For $10.20, that would go into a PCI Express. Is it? Yes, okay, this I think will work. This will give actually give me an extra antenna, which I don't have any use for, but that's not really a problem. So what I'll be doing is putting that Wi-Fi adapter right in there. It gets covered up by this plate after you connect the antenna wires. So I'll be connecting two of the antenna wires to, if I go back here and back, back, yeah, one of these. This is not the one I have, but basically it's got two little antenna leads on it. So that will work for an extra 10 bucks to give me Wi-Fi in the new system. All right, let's go back there. So motherboard, power button, cooler with a back plate for 40 bucks plus 10 for that Wi-Fi adapter card plus 110 for the video card. 
makes it $160 total. I like that. That will work. It should be powerful enough to do 4K 60 hertz, quiet, and cheap. Um, let me see, what else do I need to consider? So it's got three SATA ports, and I really only need two. One for the hard drive and one for the solid state drive. Uh, and then I could have an extra for another drive I, I'd put back there at some point. It's got one PCI Express 16X slot for the video card and another for that little Wi-Fi adapter card. Standard power supply connections. I think that's it. And for 160 bucks out of pocket, I think that will work. The price is right. Okay, so I think this will be the, the end of this video. In the next video, I'll get all the parts in, hook everything together, make sure the system basically works, and then later, probably in that same video, depending on how long that getting everything to work takes, I'll either mount all the components to a board and put it behind the TV, or I'll make that part of the process a separate video, a third video. Thanks for watching.